This is our physics uh, 212 project one. Uh, I'm Benjamin Steer and my other two teammates on this are Sam Dewey and Colin Nguyen. And um, so we'll start off with the project description real quick. So um, the problem that we decided to work on was problem one, which is the turntable. And to uh, quickly go over it, uh, we have a box of mass M that is positioned of the, off the edge you know, of a frictionless table, turntable with a radius R, which is rotating at a constant angular speed. An ideal string passing over a massless pulley and through a hole in the middle of the turntable connects the box to a hollow ball of mass M and radius R with the string wrapped around the ball. What we need to figure out is the angular speed of the turntable. So we do have some variables and assumptions that we can use to help us find out what this problem is. Uh, so first off, we can start with variables that we know, which is one, the mass of the block, a capital M and the ball, lowercase m, as well as the radius of the turntable, which you have as capital R and the ball, uh, and, uh, lowercase r for the ball. We also know that the pulley and turntable are frictionless. It means that the forces that are acting on and in the system are gravity and the tension in the string, both of which remain constant. We also know that um, the uh, assumptions that we have are that it's near the surface of the earth, the ideal pulley uh, is what we are using as well as an ideal string, and, uh, and we can also make assumptions that the air resistance is negligible. Then um, next up we have some free body diagrams. So um, there are a few free body diagrams that we can make to separate the problem, give us a better understanding of what forces are being applied and where. Um, so what we decided to do was separate uh, the problem into three separate diagrams. Um, starting off for the, the block, which has a you know, mass M, capital M, there should only be three forces acting on it, two of which cancel each other out, which is going to be our uh, gravitational force, which is pointing in the downward direction, as well as the natural force, our normal force, um, which is you know, acting on the block by the turntable. And then the force of tension, which is between the block and the string, as well, you know, getting pulled by the pulley. Uh, and then next, we are taking a look at the ball that is hanging off the turntable, um, in which case we only have two forces acting on it, which are the um, force of gravity, which we have at the center of mass, um, which we're also, one of the things that we can also assume is that the ball and the um, block are have a constant density, or at the very least for the ball, even though it's hollow, that the density around the ball is constant. Uh, and then the force of tension, which is connected towards the outer uh, edge of the ball, which is how it's getting its rotation, in which case is counterclockwise, or not counterclockwise, sorry, clockwise. And then finally, the last thing that we have is that the um, pulley as well, although it's massless, it does still have forces acting on it, which are the forces of tension, um, between each the block and the ball. Um, yeah. All right, so the next part that we have to go over according to the real world context problem is the solution for this question. So the solution for this question involves three little separate portions. We can first dive into the pulley, which Ben has already talked about. We know that the pulley is massless, so each force acting on the pulley will be equal because the pulley can rotate without a force because it has no mass. So it can just rotate and we can assume that each of these forces acting on the pulley are the same. So we'll keep this in mind as we're going through and solving for each force symbolically. First, we'll dive into the box. So the box has three forces acting on it that we can see here in the diagram. It has a normal force from the table it's pushing on it. It has its gravity force from the center of mass, and it has the tension force from the pulley. If we look at the sphere, it has only two forces acting on it because it's only going to move in the y direction. It's going to have a tension force that's pulling up on it, the same tension force that's pulling on the big block, and it has the force of gravity. Now, if we're looking at the sphere, it's going to only have motion in the y direction, as I already explained, and it's also going to have a bit of torque on it. We know this because this tension force is acting a distance away from the center of mass. That distance is going to be the radius that applies to torque. So it's going to put torque on that sphere because it's acting away from the center of mass. 
this gravitational force is not going to provide torque because it's acting on the center of mass. So there's no radius and that would make the torque be zero. So here we will set up the sum of the forces in the y direction and it is the mass times the acceleration is equal to the force of gravity minus the force of tension. And the torque, the sum of the torques is going to be equal to that one force and that one force is the force of tension. And the, the moment of inertia is found online. You can find online the moment of inertia is two thirds the mass times the radius squared. Now, if we set this two thirds mass times the radius squared equal to our force that's causing the torque, we can then get a symbolic equation for the acceleration of this sphere. Now, once we have this, this whole thing is like a system of equations. We can plug this symbolic uh, acceleration back into the equation to find our symbolic answer for the force of tension on the mass by the pulley. Once we get this, and understanding that the two tension forces are the same, we can bring this symbolic equation over here and help us solve for the angular speed over here. So on the mass, there's only one force acting in the x direction, and it's that force of tension, the same force that we just saw for over here. Now, if we bring this over here and set it equal to its mass times the centripetal acceleration, because this mass is going to accelerate centripetally, we can solve for the angular speed by substituting the centripetal acceleration equation in, v squared over r. The, the v squared will eventually cancel out and you'll be left with the angular speed is equal to the square root of 2 over 5 little mass times gravity over the radius of the table times the mass of the block. So now let's go over a little bit of units to make sure that our answer is as it should be. So the units of uh, angular speed is radians per second. Now keep in mind that radians does not have units. So it can be equivalent to like one over seconds or any number that you wish because radians does not have units. Now if we go into the units of our answer, it's two fifths, which is a scalar, doesn't have units, two fifths little mass times gravity over the radius of the table times the mass of the block. So there's two masses, so those masses will cancel out. And then there's also two distances, which we measure in meters. There's the meters and the meters per squared, or meters per second squared, and then the meters that has to do with the radius of the table. Those meters will both cancel out, and you'll be left with the square root of one over second squared. Now, if we evaluate the square root, we're, you're just going to be left with one over seconds, which is what we are looking for because we're looking for radians over second and radians don't have units. So one over S is correct unit check and our answer should make sense. Next one. Now, for our sense making for this one, one solution that we want to do in order to make sense of our situation is solve for the pulley having mass. This is something that we've done in studios in the past and it's something that we thought could apply here. So, first, in order to solve for the pulley having mass, there is going to be a net torque on that pulley because there is two forces going on that pulley and those two forces have a, ra a distance radius from the center of mass. So both of those forces are perpendicular in angle to the, to the center of mass where the torque is gonna be had. So we need to calculate the torque and then we can use this and solve symbolically for the angular speed once again. So it's a similar process. We start by summing forces for both of the masses that are applying torque to our pulley. And we eventually get to the same and sim symbolic answer that we had before. The tension force that is pulling the spherical mass is 2 fifths mg, which is what we had in our solution before. Now, if we go over to the other side, Previously, we said that both of those forces are equal because this pulley was massless. In this case, they're not. We, we can't assume that because the pulley has mass. It takes force to move it. So by solving algebraically and putting in our symbolic equation, we eventually get down to the angular speed. The new angular speed of the system is square root four fifths and then uh, little mass times gravity times the mass of the pulley times bigger mass times the radius of the table. And this makes sense because uh, the four of a fist gets multiplied by the one half, which comes from the moment of inertia of a sphere. 
and then our mass of the pulley is in the denominator, meaning that if we include it, our ex uh, angular speed should slow down, which makes sense. If, there, if it requires force to move that mass, we should see the general acceleration of the system slow down. So because of this sense making, we can say that our uh, and symbolic answer is accurate. Right. Um, sense making part two, plugging in values. Uh, in this uh, scenario that I created, uh, I inputted uh, reasonable values here in our scenario one with our uh, big, big block being 20 kilograms, our small uh, sphere being 10 kilograms, the radius being 0.5 meters, uh, and then our gravity uh, as a constant 9.81 meters per second squared. Uh, after doing all the math, here, we got a angular speed of 1.98 radians per second, uh, which is reasonable uh, given it's 20 kilograms and 10 kilograms for the ball. Uh, for scenario two, we did a unrealistic uh, units and I put 20 kilograms for the big box as well. And then I put negative five kilograms for the sphere. Uh, with the same radius of 0.5 and gravity being 9.81 as well. Uh, and as you can see, it is it does not work out and the answer does not exist given that we get a, given that we get a negative answer um, in a square root. Um, therefore proving that we you using our units and our equation, um, they they make sense and uh, are reasonable. So we are uh, comparing similar problems from our previous lectures, studios, as well as homeworks. Uh, this first activity here, our spool drop, we were calculating the acceleration of the spools as they drop, as well as this activity three from our homework. Uh, these two are very similar. Uh, the one difference was this uh, activity 4.2, we were calculating it with a zero mass pulley and activity three here, we were incorporating the mass of the pulley. Uh, and that helped us solve and uh, sense make our problem here um, for our project. And activity two here was a disc spinning around horizontally with a 20 kilogram brick on the, the side, uh, on the edge, I'm sorry. And uh, we were to calculate the angular speed of that. Uh, and that was very similar to the problem that we have uh, for our project here. And that helped us understand and sense make as well on how to calculate that. And uh, yeah, those were our similar problems. We took principles from all of, all of these and uh, applied it to this project. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you. This is all Thank we you. got. This is all we got for today.